uh, had a little incident this week. Some of you are well aware of it, <laughs> what happened. And I, it's a miracle that, you know, that I, mean, I can transmit today, okay? Because my, if, I, if it was my other channel, I wouldn't be able to transmit. It's blocked, okay? They blocked the other one. Uh, what was all that about? <laughs> it turns out that uh, this is what they sent me uh, from uh, the folks, the powers that be, okay? Say your content was removed due to violation of our community guidelines. Well, I didn't know I violated any guidelines. I'm, I wasn't even aware of it uh, because it's the first time. This is just a warning. If it happens again, your channel will be will get a strike, and you won't be able to do things like upload, uh, post, live stream for one week. Okay, and yeah, these are the types of notes that I got from them. Okay. Uh, let's see, I got another note here from them. I hope I'm still on. Uh, let me know otherwise, because I just got a message from YouTube. <laughs> so I don't know if they're going to let me to talk today. Okay, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay, so let me know if if you can't see me or hear me. Okay. Anyways, uh, I got another. Warning, I got several warnings. I got warnings all over the place. And uh, this was why I was warned uh, because of medical misinformation. Medical, okay, thank you. <laughs> Please confirm every now and then because I don't know if they're going to let me finish today. Anyways, uh, it's medical misinformation. I'm misinforming people. I was not even aware of it <laughs> that I was misinforming anybody. It was just outrageous says uh youtube is a safe place for all we have to keep it safe no doubt about it um says youtube does not allow content that spreads medical misinformation that contradicts local health authorities that's the i guess the rule the policy whatever that i violated unknowingly unwittingly i didn't even know i had violated anything uh all i did was put a video that's out there and it's a video from a conference, an international conference, okay, where different speakers get to say what they think openly. And here they treated it like, uh, you know, Kim Jong uh, from uh, North Korea. They simply censored it. That's how simply it, simple it is. And uh, it wasn't because, you know, I had uploaded somebody else's video. You know, uh, that wasn't the reason. The reason is what you see there. It's that I'm spreading misinformation. I was aware of it. <laughs> so this is this was a, really a shock to me that uh, they would go to that extreme to someone who's not even aware and unwittingly puts up a video and I get almost a strike there. They said it's just a warning, but my other channel's blocked. So I had to protest that because they say, here we're giving you a warning. <laughs> the warning turned into a strike because uh, I can't get in there. Uh, some parts of it. I can't get into the studio and I can't get into my dashboard. Okay, uh, and this is uh, what they're saying there. You can see it says, because it's the first time, this is just a warning. If it happens again, your channel will get a strike and you won't be able to do things like, you know, upload, etc., etc. Okay, uh, thank God they told me all this. <laughs> Uh, because maybe I would have immediately put another video and they would have, you know, just given me the strike without me get, having a chance to even, uh, you know, challenge it. And right now I can't even challenge it on my other channel because I can't get into the uh, part of my channel where you're supposed to do the challenging. In. <laughs> can't get into my studio. Okay, and uh, so this is uh, what I have on that channel now. It says your content was removed due to violation, blah, blah, blah. And it's because it's the first time, it's just a warning. No, it was more than a warning. I mean, I can't get in there. So maybe it's a system. I don't know. Maybe it's a human. I have no idea. So what was all this about? Um, and I'm going to have to talk in code here because I didn't know, uh, you know, this was such a big deal. In fact, I pay very little attention to this because it's not part of my theory, my extinction theory, uh, you know, disease. So I don't, I don't care about it at all. OK, 
okay? The only time I raise the issue of disease is like to say, you know, that never happened. Like a disease never killed any species, okay? That's the way, that's the only reason I, I bring in the uh, issue of disease. But, uh, so I got to talk a little bit in code here and I hope you can read between the lines there, okay? Uh, a woman, I guess I can say that because, you know, today all pronouns and nouns are acceptable. So you can call a she a he and vice versa. So I guess I can get away with this. Okay. A woman spoke at an international conference. Okay. And those of you who did manage to get to see the video know what I'm talking about. Okay. And what was the, re the issue? The issue was a malady, uh, ailment some kind of poison out there, okay? That's what the topic was about. I can't even mention the topic because I'm afraid they're gonna cancel my, my, my channel, you know? So I can't mention the, the word, it's a bad word. You can talk about anything today. You can talk about homosexuality, about God, but you cannot talk about this, okay? So I hope you can read between the lines. And she said, it's been around, this was what caught my attention, for 70 years. And I'm saying, oop, you know, I didn't know that. Uh, so if it's been around for 70 years, well, we got a little bit of a problem because if that is so, then some of the information that's out there is false. Assuming it's true, right? What this person is saying, well, then the information that you see out there is false, okay? Again, if it's true, that's a big if, okay? Uh, she's been censored. I tried to locate her. <laughs> everywhere and uh, they simply banned this individual i mean uh, they can no longer speak okay you can't find them you find other people talking about her right but not her herself okay uh can't even mention her name so sorry can't tell you that her name not here but uh, i'll give you some clues in a little while uh and that's i guess how much she is feared uh i thought she spoke very fluently, very intelligently, okay? That's what also caught my attention. And I think that's the reason she is feared. I mean, you can talk about diseases. If nobody believes what you're saying, nobody cares because the way you talk about it, you know, they say, well, he's a loony, nobody's gonna believe in him. Uh, then uh, they don't do anything to you. But this person, this person comes across as a knowable and authoritative, authoritative uh, person. And so a lot of people might believe this individual. And so if that's the case, then they are afraid of what he might say. Okay. And he does talk about investments and he mentions some people, you know, and maybe that's what it's all about. The fact that, you know, there's a bit of danger out there, right? Uh, but if what this person's saying, it destroys everything that uh, you've been told, okay? And that's a big if, okay? I'm talking about a big if here, okay? Um, so one fellow tells me who saw the, the video, he says the following. He says, uh, I've heard you're, you arguing against authority in uh, uh, science many times, yet this gal uh, uh, should be more credible for what? Authority, doctor, double standards. Uh, well, uh, I think this fellow has it wrong. He's got the wrong idea of what this is all about. So let's find out what this is all about. It's not about authority. It's not about belief. It's about facts. Okay? And then people say, Bill, I thought you said facts are not part of science, that you don't care about facts. Okay, so let's clarify that. We've got facts and we got facts, okay? So let's uh, make sure we understand what the difference are between facts and facts. We have the facts by mathematical physicists, okay? Mathematicians. And uh, they, what they do is they convert their theories, their explanations, and they say, that's a fact. It goes from hypothesis, according to them, to theory, and from theory to fact once everybody votes for it. Or, I don't know, 50% plus one or 90%. I have no idea how they determine facts, but they say space time is a fact. Uh, you know, uh, quantum mechanics is a fact. They, they say these things, it's a fact. You can't change it anymore, okay? 
And so here are some examples. You know, this is what they're saying. And they turn these uh, opinions, these theories into facts. They say, a particle can be at two places at once, for else your computer wouldn't work. Or gravity is geometry, the bending of time. That's the reason, you know, the Earth doesn't fly out of the solar system. It's in, caught in this depression warp time. And we've proven it with gravity probe B and GPS. So those are theories that the mathematicians call facts. Okay, those are not the facts we're talking about here. And okay? we're talking about some other kind of fact. We're saying, look, uh, this man lying here for uh, over a month, you know, he doesn't breathe, he doesn't move, he's dead. That's a fact. Okay, <laughs> you can't say, well, maybe, I don't know. No, no, that's a fact. Okay, uh, more uh, clear even, we have the chair is on the left side of the table. Hopefully that's a fact. You know, we're all looking at the table. We see the chair on the left-hand side of the table. That's a fact. Okay, now you, you can argue all you want. You can stand on your head. That's a fact. Okay, and... Uh, a device was registered at the patent office. Okay, you go to the patent office and you register a device. Now, that sounds like a fact. Uh, the, you know, um, I might tell you, you know, I might say, uh, um, so-and-so went to the patent office and registered a patent. And you might say, well, I, I, I have no confirmation of that. So it's a fact for me, but not for you. But you can go to the patent office, and there you can see, you know, the signatures, the uh, paperwork, whatever you need there. You say, okay, it's a fact now for me, too. In that sense, it's a fact. It's a fact in the sense that someone registered. There, there's a signature there. There's a record, et cetera, et cetera. In that sense, it's a fact. The fact that it's not a fact is because you're not aware of the fact. But that is a fact. It exists. There, there's a signature there, okay? And it's just that you are... You, you're not convinced of it because you have not gone to the patent office to verify it, okay? But that is a fact, okay? So that's a different fact than a, a mathematician telling you that his theory that a particle can be at two places at once is a fact and that they've proven it because otherwise computers wouldn't work. That's a different nonsense kind of fact, okay? So let's distinguish fact from fact. And here we're talking about exactly, you know, the example I've given here, you know? Uh, here, let me show you. This is what they're saying. They're saying, you know, uh, this fellow, uh, this individual, uh, lady, man, woman, whatever we, whatever pronoun you want to use, okay, uh, that some of these patents that they have out there, this is what she was talking about, have been around for maybe 50, 60 years, okay? So if there's a patent out there on something, was well, something you can verify and you can say, well, this guy's lying or this gal is telling the truth, you know, so you can go either way. Okay, so it's something verifiable. In fact, I took the trouble to find out if it was true or not, you know, uh, I, I went there to verify, <laughs> to make sure that I'm comfortable with this issue, right? Um, and this individual, this gal, he's, he's saying, um, the antidote that they de developed the antidote for this poison, for this ailment, before anyone knew about it. So, so you, here you have the bubonic plague, right? And it doesn't come until, uh, what was it, uh, 1348. That's when uh, the first uh, big, uh, you know, Black Death issue occurred in uh, Europe. And here you go to the patent office in 1346, two years earlier, and you patent a, uh, an antidote for the Black Death. Now that's, that's a little irrational, a little counterintuitive. Why would you patent something for a disease that doesn't exist? You see the, the issue? The, this is what this lady was raising, okay? And so it's irrational to patent an, an uh, antidote before the poison exists. That's the issue, okay? And so, yeah, it comes down to censorship. They censored this individual. Uh, they're, they're censoring me. I mean, they're blocking me, right? Um, and uh, 
you know, here, uh, these are lies that are deliberately, you can say they're lies, outright law, lies, that's one possibility. There's another possibility is that they're, uh, they have different version of that same story, okay? And I do want to say something about that because this all says, oh, Bill, you believe everything you read out there? No, no. I, in fact, uh, the first step is be skeptic, be, be skeptical, okay? And I was cautious. This uh, individual was talking very straightforward, uh, sound, sounded knowledgeable, uh, spit out a lot of facts, and I accepted the facts at face value to understand what it was all about. Out of that uh, dissertation, I reached my own conclusion that I'm going to investigate this. I want to understand it myself. And not because it has much to do with extinction, but because of the way uh, news is handled, which is very, very important here. <laughs> okay, that's the issue, especially you're talking about censorship, right? And so I went out there and uh, uh, looked at, uh, uh, by the way, yeah, it puts all countries on the level of uh, North Korea when they do that. Nobody can say that, oh, we have freedom over here and they don't have freedom over there. No, no. If you do what they did to this individual and then to me, uh, no. That's no different than North Korea. Absolutely none. So no one can point their fingers at anybody else out there. But anyways, I went and investigated and I said, well, was there a patent? And yes, there were, there were patents, not one, but many. In the last 60 years, there are several patents, big corporations, okay? So what's the issue? The issue is that there's two sides to this story. And I'm just making you aware of it. You reach your own conclusions. I just want to make you aware that there are two sides to this story. There's the side this individual talked about and said, look, uh, it's been around and they patented this two years before it happened and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I went to see where this news came from. Okay. This news came from a, an article that was written. Uh, by a group that analyzed this whole thing. And their conclusion was that there was a, um, a strip of molecules, okay? Molecules, atoms, you know? And um, this string of molecules was found in the poison. And they said, that's so strange because why would we find it here and there? This is too much of a coincidence it doesn't happen in nature. And some other people went and made a counter argument. They said, well, these people are wrong. It is found in nature automatically. You find it in animals. Okay. And so all I can give you is the argument and the counter argument. The argument is this doesn't happen by chance. And the counter argument is uh, uh it, no it doesn't happen by chance but it's already in nature okay so uh, so you got to be careful uh don't take any sides until you do a, a deep research on this okay uh, that's all i'm saying now the fact that this fellow is uh, this uh, individual uh, uh, um, censored does make you wonder why would they go out of their way to censor him okay Okay, so all I can say is for those of you who want to know what I'm talking about, here we see at the bottom, okay, you can go there and you'll find it. I uploaded it there, okay, so you can just click there and you'll find I put it up there today. You can go to the site and then see it for yourself, see what this uh, lady has to say about this subject, okay, and I'll leave you with that, but all I'm saying is have a word of uh, caution for you, and that is do an investigation before you reach your conclusion. When you re uh, listen to this individual, you would immediately think, oh, okay, yeah, it's, uh, it's always been like that and blah, blah, blah. No, don't stop there. Keep going. Look it up, okay? Um, I can put the name, number of the patents, okay, also. I've got that as well. Look them up. Uh, a lot of it is uh, a lot of mumble jumble, you know, it's uh, the jargon, very high level jargon. So if you don't understand a lot of that, you may not understand the arguments. 
It's not so easy, okay? All I can tell you is there are two sides of the story, to, to this story, and just, you know, uh, have an open mind in both directions, okay? And I'll leave you with that, <laughs> okay? Okay, anyways, uh, let's moving on here. We have uh, this issue. We have um, that uh, some countries are trying to get away from the dollar as much as they can. And gonna, they're trying to see if they can do some commerce, some trade out there without using the dollar. And I hope they don't censor me for this. <laughs> uh, we have Brazil and China recently struck a deal to settle trade in their local currencies. Okay, and what they want to do is bypass the greenback. Indian Malaysia, same thing. And then you have uh, France is, <clears throat> is also starting to complete transactions in the yuan. Okay? Uh, currency experts are leery, sounding like Cassandra, but it says uh, predicted the dollar's imminent demise on any number of occasions over the past century. And yet in observing this sudden wave of agreements aimed at sidestepping the dollar, they detect a sort of meaningful action, however small and gradual, that was typically missing in the past. So we have a new situation where some countries are talking about this. Uh, they're making plans, okay? And for many global leaders, their rationales for taking these measures are strikingly similar. And what are they? They're worried about America's foreign policy priorities and the fact that it punishes those who oppose them. Okay, so this is what it's all about. So uh, this is on its way. Uh, a lot of people say, well, it's not going to happen because the dollar is just so widespread, blah, blah, blah. But you know, the pound used to be the currency of the world for some time until the dollar replaced it. So keep that in mind. Uh, just be cautious, okay? And some countries say, hey, you know, the fact that these folks are using that as a weapon is hurting our economy, and so we're going to take measures. And maybe they have no other choice but to go in that direction, and that creates a parallel coinage or many coins. You know, everybody does business in their own coin or whatever. And if, if that happens, you know, it's going to diminish the influence of the dollar, okay? Okay, so here's uh, another view of that. It says the BRICS bloc, you know, here, there you have Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, is becoming an increasingly significant alliance against the West in the wake of Putin's war. The alliance is set to become much more geopolitically uh, geopolitical heavyweight. A further 18 nations have expressed interest in joining. So you can see that this might be growing. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but... Uh, there's always a starting point, and that seems to be the case here, right? In addition to expanding its membership, the alliance is also discussing plans to introduce a cross-border currency for BRICS countries. It's been driven by Russia and China, and specifically by the need to try and find these alternative spaces for commerce that are outside of Western norms, and particularly Western sanctions. Okay, a lot of countries are becoming aware the United States is using that as um, to uh, as punishment and to get their way, and they don't like it. And so it might be a double-edged sword to do what the United States did to Russia, and just creates a precedent that other countries say, "Oh, I don't want that happening to us." So why don't we take some measures in advance? And I think that's where they're at right now. They're in discussions only, okay? and. Uh, I think it's very unlikely that it's going to happen in a very short uh, time that countries switch to some other currency or reach some parallel agreements. Uh, the dollar is very strong in the world, but just keep that in mind. There's always a starting point. This is the ABC, and sometimes you reach XYZ. <laughs> okay. In uh, another matter, here we have the nukes. Uh, says amid the crisis triggered by the Ukraine conflict, President Vladimir Putin announced in February that Russia was suspending participation in the New START treaty, an agreement signed in 2010, 2010 that limits the number of Russian and U.S. deployed strategic nuclear warheads. Moscow and Washington control 90% of the world's nuclear weapons, and Moscow would only return to a nuclear arms reduction treaty if Washington abandons its hostile stance, which the United States is not about to do in the short term. So for the short term, there's no agreement, no start. And no start means that, you know, everybody gets to do their own little secret in uh, developments, you know, uh, tests, whatever they do, and it creates a more dangerous world, 
you know, especially when they're at war in one place and maybe we start another war somewhere else in the Pacific, you know, um, not, not very good for humanity for the powers that be not to be friendly with each other. You would think that uh, the opposite would be nice, that everybody, you know, picks up the red phone and starts talking and say, okay, Joe, don't worry about it. Let's drink some vodka or champagne or whiskey or whatever and get it over with and we reach an agreement. You know, that's not happening right now. They don't seem to be on friendly terms. Now, there's a lot of people out there, some conspiracy theorists, you know, and they'll say that all this is talked about in secret, but they do indeed shake hands. Personally, I don't believe in that conspiracy theory. I don't believe that Putin and Biden are kissing each other, you know, and having fun while the world suffers. I don't think that's happening. I think this is for real, okay? I think the uh, navies are moving around the world. They're all doing their own thing. They're all trying to gain influence. And we're headed to a bipolar world where we have the East versus West. Essentially, that's what's happening. And this is a little different than what happened with Persia or Greece or uh, Rome. You know, this is a totally different story because now we're talking about the entire planet. Okay, uh, it's a closed system right now. Before it wasn't a closed system because there was room for expansion, new tribes, new, new um, uh, countries, you could say, that would uh, emerge. That's not the case now. This is the end, uh, this is end game kind of stuff, okay? So yeah, I think that uh, when, not if, but when the world collapses, meaning when humans become extinct, uh, nukes will probably be part of the fireworks. Okay? I'm almost sure about that. Now, I don't think there's enough nukes to blow the whole planet out. Uh, there's enough nukes maybe to destroy the other guy's silos. That's one issue. And the other one is they'll destroy maybe a few cities. But then um, the issue, as far as I'm concerned, is the destruction of the global economy. We will not recover from that. Okay? And that's, that's my argument on that. Okay, uh, here's one I individual. He says, uh, you cite a collapse in the food chain and a collapse in genetic diversity. Yeah, those are two different mechanisms. Okay, are you saying that we're going the way of the gross Michel? Well, uh, apparently there, he said there's this uh, banana that went away because of uh, uh, lack of genetic diversity and that there's another banana that replaced this one. Okay, if there's little genetic diversity to work with, the introduction of a sudden shocking stressor could potentially wipe out, uh, wipe us all out. Yeah, uh, and again, that's not the theory we propose here, okay? This is why, for example, the uh, uh, Tassie tiger, you know, the Tasmanian t tiger went extinct because they were so inbred that they could not adapt to all the hunting. Uh, well, I don't think that's the reason the poor old Tassie went away, okay? Is this your theory? No, uh, absolutely not. We need to understand what I'm proposing here. And what I'm proposing here is not genetic diversity. I'm saying that genetic diversity is happening. In other words, we're losing genetic diversity. Okay, we're all clones. And the uh, reason we know that we're clones is we matched our genetic diversity against uh, chimps. And uh, a troop of chimps, you know, out there in Africa has more genetic diversity than the entire human race, than 8 billion people. And you say, how can that possibly be? Here we have all these individuals. Each one has mutations every day. We should have a lot of the genetic diversity. We don't. Compared to chimps in a troop, maybe 100 monkeys there, you know, they have more genetic diversity among them than the entire human race of 8 billion people. I hope that sinks in. It uh, has to make you think a little bit, right? Okay, so this is what we're proposing here, okay? We're saying the following. There's two mechanisms of extinction as far as this site is concerned. One is a background extinction. The other one is in a uh, mass extinction. Background is a uh, demographic, a population pyramid overturn. The other one is an ecological pyramid overturn. You know, you have all these trophic levels, okay? Okay, so what are we talking about? We're saying that... Um, the first one is after millions of years, plants um, lose their genetic diversity, okay, and they can't uh, uh, radiate anymore because there are no new niches 
uh, to conquer and mother nature has lost uh, uh you know doesn't have in the magic wand any more uh, uh, gifts to give these plants so they reach kind of like the end of the line they 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 can't diversify anymore and they've reached their uh, full potential for for that order or for that family or for that species and that happens also to animals animals you know you have a species they uh, reproduce at the beginning it expands you know uh, greatly and especially its genetic diversity and but at some point it turns the corner and the curve starts coming down all the way to extinction it's a long curve but it's always a downward slanted curve and why is that because you have bottlenecks and you have uh, founders effects and those trump those overrule the mu uh, periodical mutations that these plants have, or animals. It doesn't matter if it's plant or animal. The uh, mechanism is the same, okay? That's a different mechanism than we have for um, the e uh, overturning of the ecological pyramid, which is what causes a mass extinction. Mass extinction is a sudden extinction of entire families or orders, whereas the... Uh, Population pyramid overturn is uh, species specific. Okay, so the background extinction explains how one species dies, the other one explains how many species die suddenly. Two different mechanisms. What is the mechanism? The mechanism is that food disappears gradually and uh, more towards the end because of the demographic uh, overturning of uh, of the pyramid. Of plants. Animals who are stuck to those plants find fewer and fewer plants. The island shrinks, the forest shrink, the jungle shrink, right? They find fewer uh, food, but it turns out that they've expanded in numbers at the same time that the food sources are disappearing, okay? And so what happens? At some point, you know, they don't have enough food to eat, and at some point they collapse, the whole system collapses. And it involves orders, it involves many families of species that depend on the same sources of food. So in a relatively short period of time, maybe of a thousand years, uh, they all die. A whole order disappears. What has disappeared? A food chain. Because what disappears first are the herbivores because their food sources disappear. And right behind them are the carnivores. That's more or less the situation. It happens on land in the air and in the sea okay so it's universal so that's the mechanism that we propose how is man going to die he's not going to die in a population pyramid overturn not going to die because the um, genetic diversity has disappeared among humans if we're going to die we're going to die in a mass extinction we're going to die suddenly why because food disappears food disappears why because someone produces it today and it ain't you <laughs> that's the problem Someone brings it with a golden spoon, puts it in your mouth. Okay, that's why you are able to live one more day. And all we have to do is um, get rid of money. And then the producer doesn't have any reason to produce it, package it, and transporter doesn't have to transport it to you, put it on the shelves for you, and you're on your own at that point. Okay, so once money disappears, food disappears. Why will money disappear? Because our global economy cannot expand forever. That's the, the summary for that, okay? So you, you cannot have the global ex economy just expand forever. At some point, it's going to stop expanding. When it does, not if, but when it does, money will be no more. Nobody will accept money of any kind any more than you accept Argentine pesos or Vietnamese, whatever they're called, or <laughs> whatever all that money is. You know, that's just paper money, numbers in the computer, you know, nobody cares about those. Uh, right now we give it importance because we can do something with that money. But in the future when no one accepts it, you will not receive it either. And at that point, we're all dead. <laughs>